Oh, Q. Hey, what's up, my peoples? I'm Go here, the freaking geek himself, and today we will be reviewing the Q Ranger DX Habit Sky Voyager. So here we are, and there it is. And first and foremost, as always, we'll take a quick look at the packaging. So right up front here, we have the Habit Sky Voyager. We have the included Q Tomo. We got Habit Sky Silver right there. Combinations on the top of the box. We have the Voyager. We have Habit Sky Silver on the side of the box. We have Habit Sky Silver. Like, don't, don't, don't make me use this Q Tomo. But I, I'll do it. I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll, mm, mm. Anyway. On the side of the box, we have Heavy Sky Voyager. We have all of our Voyagers. On the bottom, we have things and stuff. We're going to get to that in a little bit. On the back of the box, we have your obligatory product shots. It does this, that, and the other. And back to the bottom, we have Side Park Man! And that's basically it for the packaging. So moving right along, here we have the Habit Sky Voyager, the Voyager of Habit Sky Silver. And we will take a look at the Voyager itself in a little bit. But first, we're going to take a look at the included Q-Tama. So here is the Habit Sky Q-Tama for Habit Sky Silver. And you can see his number 06. Uh, Molding-wise, it's your typical Q-Tama. Nothing really different here. Stuff we've all seen. Got the pins on the bottom, numbers and stuff. And yeah, we have... Little image here. We have part of the image on the front, part of the image on the back. And when we spin, we get the complete image there of the snake, which looks pretty freaking cool. I really like that. I dig that very much. And if we backlight the Qtama here, I'll bring in my, my flashlight if I can get it to work. There we go. You can see right here when we backlight it, you can see Habit Sky Silver sitting there. In the cockpit. There you go. So yeah. Oh uh, yeah. How the Habit Sky Q Tama. So without further ado. Let's bring in the Caesar Blaster. And listen to some noises. Let's get going. Habit Sky Q Tama. Uh, let's change. Touching! Hey, Beach Gang. There you go. <laughs> so now we will do our attack. <laughs> That's just funny. So we will do our final attack. Galaxy. That. Now we will summon our Voyager. <laughs> oh, that little jingle there. So, now let us control our Voyager. Hey, it's like a chompa chompa noise. Um, and now we'll dock. And we'll dock some more. We'll do some more docking. All day docking. All right, that's it. So there you go. 
There you have the Hebitskai Kyutama. Oh, and one thing I forgot to mention is that uh, Hebitskai represents the Ophiuchus constellation. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Ophiuchus? Ophiuchus? I don't know how you pronounce that, but represents that constellation. So <laughs> there you have that. So moving on to the Voyager itself. Here is the Hebitskai Voyager, and here it is in its snake snake mode. It 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 tries. It it tries, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> So here it is, We're getting close here so we can see the details. We have some nice bronze paint there for the eyes, some nice metallic gray. You get a nice gunmetal gray here for the top and a lot of molded detail. Looks very nice, got the fangs going on there. And of course the feet become the bottom jaw, which, you know, hey, it's it's trying, it, it's trying. <laughs> It does have visible head syndrome. Well, visible everything syndrome. I mean, there are the legs, arms, head. I mean, it's just, it's all there. Nothing's really trying to hide anywhere on this, but yeah. They have the Habitsky Voyager, and you can attach your Q-Tama to it. You just line up these old tabs right here with the slots in the Q-Tama. Clip that on, and voila, there you have the full Habitsky Voyager. And for a comparison, we will bring in... His partner here, the Tenbin Voyager. Just so you can see how they look together, the scale and the snake. So, there you go. Now, I mean, there's, I guess, there is articulation. You can make the mouth open and close there. You can kind of move that around, you know, angle that however you want. So, there is some articulation there. But, yeah, what you see is pretty much what you get. So, let's transform him into his robot mare. So, to do that, we're just going to turn to Kutama. So it sits that way, and we're going to unpeg the legs. You see the peg just goes right there to the inside of the knee. Then just straighten the legs out, bring the feet up a bit, and we're going to take the head and just bring that back, and then take this whole assembly here and just swing that up. That will come up right there. Then we have to raise the camera up a smidge here. You stand. You you stand. You okay? Fine. Then lay there. Lay there. Lay there. Then. If you want to be difficult. Anyway. <laughs> you just <laughs> take the arms here and you just unpeg them. You can see this section pegs over that section right there. And once you do that, you just bring the arms down. And there you have the Heavy Sky Voyager in its robot mode. There you go. So we're getting closer on the head sculpt. It's a very nice head sculpt. I do quite dig it. You got some gold right there for the head crest, some black, some red. You got some red paint apps right there on the shoulders. Some red paint going down this arm right here. You can see he looks like he's holding some, uh, some old dagger weapons here. And these bits of the snake head are like kind of like shield type bits. And you got some red stripage going down the leg. Black stripage going down that leg. And yeah. Now, articulation wise, uh, nothing at the head. It could move up a little bit, but that's more for transformation than anything. The arms can do a full 360. They can go in and out. You have an elbow joint with 90 degrees of a bend, nothing at the waist. Legs forward that far, back that far, outward. You can do the full splits. Uh, there's no swivels or anything there. You do have a full knee bend, which is nice ratcheted, and the feet. Can move up and down a bit to get a couple clicks there. And there you go. So, let's get him standing here. And for a comparison, here he is with Kirino. Just so you can see how he scales there with the big mecha. So, there you have that. And here he is with the Tenbin Voyager, so you can see how they look together. And they are basically the same toy. Uh, molding wise, the only differences are the head and the arms, but everything else is the same mold. And obviously different coloration as well. But yeah, basically the same toy as you can see, but they do look good together. They're partners. Yay! So yeah, I have lots. So, of course, you can combine him with Kirino, so we will start off with, what will we start off with? We'll start off with arm mode, and to get him into arm mode, you basically are putting him back into his Voyager mode, his uh, snake mode. So, you're just going to bring this back down, bring the head back up, bring those arms back, and then we just bring them in, peg this section over that section, then we take the legs, and again, you have the post right there, port right there. 
And you just peg the knees in like that. Then you just bring them up like that. And then you just take the Kutama and you bring it around like that. And depending on whether or not you want it to be a left or a right arm, you just turn the Kutama to the respective side. And that's how that works. Very, very simple. So we will bring in Kudano. And we will remove Mr. Kajiki Yellow here. Since the beat sky was the right arm on the show, we'll just plug that in. And there is the Habit Sky Voyager as an arm. And again, looks a lot better on the show because on the show, of course, they can cheat things and make it look a lot better, a lot more streamlined. This looks kind of... But yeah, no. It is what it is. And just to get the full effect here, we'll remove the Chameleon and bring in Tenbin. There you go. So you have that combination going on with Habit Sky and Tenbin. You can see how that looks. So, there you have that. Now, can also become a leg. And to get him into leg mode, you're just going to take the robot mode legs here and you're just going to collapse them up all the way. So just unpeg that, collapse them up all the way. And the instructions tell you to just bring the top of the snake head back like that. Which is not correct. That's not accurate. It's not accurate at all, but we'll get to that in a little bit. Anyway, take the Kutama and just spin it so it's in that orientation. And you are good to go. So we'll bring Kureno back in. We have Tenbin here as a leg. And we will remove the bull. Come here, bull. And we will plug in Habit Sky as a leg. And there you have Habit Sky and Tenbin as legs. There you go. They work as legs, you know, they work, uh, kind of, sort of. Now again, the instructions, the instructions tell you to just have the top of the snake head just kind of hanging out the back like that, but that, no, that's not accurate. On the show, the beach guy was used as a leg in, uh, I think it was the very last episode, and yeah, this was up against the back of the leg like that, so that's more accurate. If you remember when I reviewed Tenbin, um, again, the instructions said to just leave these out like that, but no, on the show, they're right up against the leg like that. So this is actually screen accurate, so I was right, and the show is right. The instructions are wrong. <laughs> the instructions are just wrong. It's really supposed to be up against the leg like that. That's the way it's supposed to be. There you go, there they are, those legs. So there you have that, and that is pretty much it for the Habit Sky Voyager. Another very cool Voyager. And get him back in the robot mode here. Come here, give me, get, 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 get over here, get, get over here. Need to make you look pretty. So I can finish up this video. Come on, stand, stand all pretty like, stand all pretty like, man, stand all pretty like. Just because you don't have emotions doesn't mean you can't be pretty. There you go. There you go. <laughs> I have weird conversations with my toys. You know what else is weird? That I have conversations with my toys. But anyway, there we have the Habit Sky Voyager. Very cool. Again, I like how uh, him and, and Tenbin, you know, they have their own uh, robot modes. I, I do quite dig that. And, you know, they're not the most super posable things in the world, but still uh, a neat concept nonetheless. Of course, you know, they have ton of like backpack and junk going on back here but again you know it has to work in real life so stuff like this is gonna happen but all in all though very cool very fun and uh definitely enjoying this line so far i'm digging it so there you have that now i picked this up from hobby link japan but of course there are many other sites you can go to for stuff like this if you are interested such as cs toys ami ami hobby search mandarake of course there's always ebay and amazon but do be wary of their pricing you can also check out bigbadtoystore.com for super sentai items again i don't know when or if they'll be carrying q ranger items but you can check with them if you do want to buy from them i'll put a link to their site in the description down below so you can check that out you can also check out my q ranger play list for any reviews you may have missed also linked in the description down below so check that out as well and i think that's it so don't forget to check out m games check out lori plan follow me on twitter all of that good stuff down in the description below and i think that's pretty much all there is to say so there is the q ranger dx habit sky voyager and this is mgo saying remember you don't stop playing because you grow old you grow old because you stop playing be geek be proud 
Home in your face! I wish I could feel emotion. Something. Anything. Hmm. Hey, I know. <laughs> so, what are you feeling now? Hungry? Oh, man.